Um, hello, everyone. This is Zhi Jiang Guo from Singapore University of Technology and Design. And today I'm going to present a paper titled Densely Connected Graph Convolutional Networks for Graph to Sequence Learning. And this is a joint work with Yan Zhang, Zhi Yang Teng, and Wei Lu. So the graph to sequence learning task can be framed as transducing the graph structures to sequences for text generation. Here we use an example in AMR to text generation to illustrate this process. The source side is an AMR graph, which is a meaning representation, and the target side is a natural language sequence corresponding to the meaning representation. The main challenge here is how to encode the AMR graph. One of the existing approach is to linearize the AMR graph into sequence, then feed the sequence into the sequence encoder to get the representations. However, useful structural information will be lost in this process. Recent works leverage the graph encoders include graph state LSTM and gated graph neural networks to encode the input graph directly. Both of these approach use recurrent neural networks to learn the representation of graphs. Compared to recurrent neural network, convolutional neural networks are easier to parallelize and are more amenable to hardware acceleration. This leads to a natural question. Is it possible to apply the convolutional graph encoders for graph to sequence learning task? One typical approach is the graph convolutional network proposed by Keith and Welling. The GCN model has been successfully applied to many NLP tasks, including syntax-based machine translation and relation extraction. The GCN model is able to operate directly on the graph structures, where the representation of each node is updated based on its adjacent neighbors through an information propagation scheme. Here, the first graph convolutional layer is able to capture the first order proximity information. For example, the interaction between the node highlighted in blue and the two nodes highlighted in orange can be captured in the first graph convolutional layer. For the second layer, it is able to capture the second order proximity information. For example, the interaction between the node highlighted in blue and two additional nodes highlighted in orange can be captured um, by the second graph convolutional layer. Intuitively, a deeper GCM model is able to capture rich local and unlocal information associated on a large graph However, previous research efforts show that the best performance of the GCM model is achieved with a relatively shallow architecture, the two-layer model. There are many existing approaches to solve this issue. One of the alternative solutions is to apply a LSTM attention operation to aggregate information among layers. By using this mechanism, they are able to stack many graph convolutional layers. Another alternative solution is that they attach an additional bidirectional LSTM after a two-layer GCM model for better graph representation. This leads to the second question. Um, these approaches rely on recurrency architecture. Is it possible to use a purely convolutional architecture with more layers to learn a better graph representation? To answer this question, we propose the densely connected graph convolutional networks, DCGCNs in short. Our proposed model is able to have much more graph convolutional layers and which enable the model to capture the long range distance associated long-range information associated on a relatively large graph. The core component of our proposed model is the dense connectivity. 
um, for vanilla GCNs, each layer only takes input from the previous layer. While in our proposed model, each layer takes input from all preceding layers. And this dense connectivity is inspired by the dense net. Here we define these densely connected layers as densely connected graph convolutional layers. Our proposed model consists of M identical blocks and each block has two types of components, densely connected subblocks and linear combination layer. I will start with the densely connected subblock. Each DCGCM block has two subblocks and graph convolutional layers in both subblocks are densely connected as we just defined. Intuitively, subblocks with different numbers of layers is able to capture information at different levels, similar to different filter sizes in convolutional neural networks. Here, the number of layers in both subblocks are different. The first subblock has n layers, while the second subblock has m layers. m and n are hyperparameters. As our model has much more layers, we need to make sure the number of parameters of this deeper model is manageable and comparable to previous methods. Therefore, for parameter efficiency, we have following designs. Assume the input dimension of the subblock is big D and the number of layers of the subblock is L. The output dimension of each layer is proportional to the number of layers of the subblock, which is the big D divided by L. After that, we concatenate output from all these L layers to form the final representation. The dimension of this final representation is also big D, the same dimension as the input representation. Then we will introduce the second component, linear combination layer. This layer assigns different ways to output of different layers. Here, this layer enables the model to integrate representations from different abstract levels to form a better representation. Here is the full model architecture for the graph to sequence learning task. For the input, we, sim we use input embedding plus the positional embedding. Here, we use task specific positional encoding. And for the graph encoder, it consists of multiple identical DCGCM block, as we just discussed. After that, another linear combination layer is applied to integrate the representation from these DCGCM blocks to form the final representation. For, for the LSTM decoder and the attention mechanism, we're following the previous work for a fair comparison. We evaluate our model on two different tasks and four data sets. For the first task, the AMR to text generation task, we have two data sets, AMR 2015 and AMR 2017. Here are the data statistics for this data set. As we can see in the table, the number of training instances in the AMR corpus is relatively small, which makes it a challenging task. Here are the main results on the AMR 2015 dataset. Baselines include sequence encoder, recurrent graph encoder, and mix encoder. Here the mix encoder means we apply an additional LSTM after a two-layer GCM model. Our, our proposed model solely rely on graph convolutional layer. It's able to achieve higher blue score on this dataset. Following the previous experimental setting, we also leverage the external chaining data. We obtain the external chaining data by using an AMR parser on the gigahertz data set. As we can see in the table, our proposed model trained with 0.2 million external chaining data is able to achieve higher blue score compared to baselines chain with the same amount of data. Furthermore, our proposed model chain with 0 0.1 million external chaining data is able to outperform the baseline chain with the 0 0.2 million external chaining data. 
and which shows the effectiveness of our model in terms of using chaining data. Our proposed model trained with 0 0.3 million external chaining data is able to achieve competitive results when comparing with the models trained with 2 million external chaining data. And our ensemble model is able to achieve the new state of the art results on this data set. For the AMR 2017 data set, our, we compare our single model with sequence encoder, recurrent graph encoder, and max encoders. As shown in the table, our proposed model not only achieve higher results in terms of blue score and CHIF++ score, but also has way less number of parameters. For the ensemble performance, we have similar observations. For the second syntax-based machine translation task, it has two different data sets, English to German data set and English to Czech data set. Here are the data statistics of this data set. As shown in the table, the translation data set have much more training instances than the AMR training data set. We first look at the results on the English to German translation task. Baselines include mixed encoders. Here, they use a two-layer GCM model after the back of words or convolutional neural networks or recurrent neural networks, sequence encoder and recurrent graph encoders. Our proposed model is able to achieve higher performance on these two evaluation metrics while requiring less amount of parameters. For the much harder English to check translation task, we also have similar observations, which shows that um, our model is also e effective on the relatively large training data set. We also examined the contribution of different components in our proposed model. The dense connections, which is the core component of our proposed model, plays a significant role in the DCGCM model. We also report results against different number of parameters on AMR 2015 data set. According to the figure here, we first increase the number of blocks in the DCGCM model. Generally, the performance goes up and we also design different GCM models with different number of layers and different hidden sizes under the same amount of number, under the same amount of parameters. According to the figure, our proposed model consistently outperform the GCM model under the same amount of parameters. Furthermore, our smallest model is able to outperform all vanilla GCM models even though it has a much larger number of parameters. To conclude, our main contribution in this paper is that we propose a novel GCM model with deep layers, which allows the graph encoder to better capture the structural information of the graph. And for future work, we would like to explore how other NLP applications can potentially benefit from the proposed approach. Um, for example, we presented a paper two days ago, and in that paper, we showed that the dense connection is also beneficial to the relation extraction task. And our code is available on this website, STAT NLP Research Machine Learning. And thank you, that's all I got. <laughs>